All right, everyone, it is time. It is time for me once again to prove the naysayers wrong. Everyone said that I couldn't do it, that I couldn't destroy Yu-Gi-Oh once and for all, but I am here to prove that I absolutely have that capacity. However, I don't think it will be done through the ban list that I released the other day. If any of you watched my video, you know that I have some pretty clear thoughts about what I can be taken off of the ban list. And you know, from the last time we did this, that I was absolutely 100% right and it had no lasting meta impact or repercussions whatsoever, which we could tell from a sample size of one tournament. King Hazana, thank you for the subscription. Today we come to test that thesis again. My most recent video advocates the unbanning of 54 cards and the limiting of 6 others. I intend to, with a single ban and a single limit, ensure that all of these cards return to Yu-Gi-Oh forever and have no impact on greater play rates. This means decks like like Drytron, VW, Dinosaur, will continue to be the best deck, but much more beatable than they had been in the past. And I'm happy to announce that that is exactly what today's, uh, today's swath of games will play. Now, before we get in to the actual games, which we will, of course, be able to bet on, uh, I will once again educate you about the ban list that I have made. So, here is uh, the ban list, the list of cards that I think could change pretty much immediately. Firstly, uh, Wind Up Hunter put to zero and VFD put to zero as well. VFD, of course, is very powerful in Virtual World. Wind Up Hunter is on here because we're making the Reddit swap that they advocate for every ban list season where we unlimit Zen Maity. In terms of one, Blaster we put to one. Uh, that's uh, the Dragon Ruler that is the least problematic still on the list. Kagigo, thank you for the subscription. Danglong we've put to one, which I'm a little hesitant about. Chicken Game we've put to one, because FDKs are not particularly viable even with Chicken Game to one. Heavy Storm to one, which I don't think anyone really took advantage of, proving that it is absolutely uh, non-problematic. And Skull Dread in order to more effectively uh, cut back against deep draw decks that would otherwise probably pop up. To three, we have enabled. Teller Knight Tolmaius, Astrograph Sorcerer, Masterpiece the True Draco Slaying King, Skull Crabat Joker, Yada Garasu, Firewall Dragon with Arata, Zenmeity, Mirage Stallio, Time Seal, Cyberstein, Every Single Danger, Dark Greffer, Dynamite Knight, Pankratops, Double Iris Magician, Birdman, Archfiend, Morphing Jar, Night Assailant, Phantom Skyblaster, Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon, Lithosagim, Rusty Bardish, Dulorn, Ignister Prominence, Master Diamond, Trishula, Emerald, Hyper Librarian, A Hero Lives, Called by the Grave, Card Destruction, Chain Strike, Dimensional Fissure, Divine Wind of Mist Valley, Draco Face Off, Final Countdown, Gold Sarcophagus, Instant Fusion, Into the Void, Midbreaker Field, One Day of Peace, Reasoning, Secus Light, Slash Draw, Resort, Symbol of Heritage, Light Stage, Macro Cosmos, Magical Explosion, Malicious, True King's Return, and Butterfly Dagger Elma. So with all of this, what could possibly be the best deck? With all of these changes, what could the best deck possibly be? Many of you thought it was going to be some sort of degenerate FTK that involved Grapha. Many of you thought it was going to be True Draco. A non-zero amount of you thought it was unironically going to be Dark World. Well, I am happy to announce that I've picked 16 individuals who represent both the best of this format and the best of the hypothetical format that I have designed today. They are all playing different decks, and the decks are all poggers. Every single one a banger. So without further ado, I'm going to let you know exactly what they were playing. We've got RinPG333. They are playing Bird Up. Now, this is a bird up build that is on three copies of Divine Wind of Mist Valley. I don't I don't know what the interaction is. I think you're maybe you're leaving the Kinka Bio on field, which triggers it. Does that even trigger it? I, I realistically could not tell you how good the card is, but I guess we will we will see. Next up is Sebastian, aka Sebto, on Chaos Thunder. Chaos Thunder absolutely made deep runs last tournament uh, just by virtue of having more dangers. This time, it's got a little harder road to hoe. Uh, <laughs> its bracket is not particularly good. It unfortunately doesn't really have as many of the tools as any of the other combo decks do, and it lacks Thunder Dragon Colossus. So good luck to them, but we'll see. 
Danger Dark World is in here as well. I included this because everyone seems to think that this is going to be relevant. It's also a deck playing three Phantom Sky Blaster, a card that many people have reservations about, and I'm willing to come around on. Originally, I wondered why no one played this card at one. It's because it requires an extra deck investment that doesn't make sense if you're only playing one copy, but if you're playing three, maybe it does. We've got Dinosaur. Dinosaur is just a good deck from this format, but it got a couple of things on this list. You'll note that this list is playing uh, Danglong, so we will get to see the really powerful combos that this card enables, as well as one copy of Lothosagym. You would expect more, right? Well, you would be wrong, because Lothosagym is really only okay. Uh, I'm excited to see how this one does as well. Drytron. Many people think that Drytron is tier 0 under this list, and, you know, I'm not going to argue against them. It didn't really get anything other than more insurance for its turn 1 setup plays. I'm talking about additional copies of Instant Fusion to make Millennialize Restrict. I'm talking about Called by the Grave. Both of those things are miraculous. This list is playing 3 Droll and Lockbird, making a correct assumption about the quality of decks that are going to be represented. Next up is Empty Jar. Empty Jar made a showing last time. It was able to take a single game off of Dinosaur. It's a very competent deck. Surprisingly has a lot of tools like Gallant Granite and Papli Operative that don't seem very good on face, but actually amount to really powerful setups. That said, the fact that Droll and Lockbird exists means that I think it's unlikely this is ever going to win a game two or a game three. Uh, we shall see, however. Uh, this deck... I really have very little to say about this deck. Why, I guess, is what I would ask about this deck. It's Magical Explosion. I put Magical Explosion to three. I didn't think it would change anything, and realistically, I don't think it has. More important than Explosion for this deck list is Into the Void, which is now at three as well. It's just an FDK deck, boyos. That's all it is. Note that even though it could be playing three copies of Card Destruction, they elected to play one. Very funny. It's also got an Eldritch Transformative sideboard, so if we get to see that, I will pog. Rykape is on Gem Knight. Not a big surprise to anyone who knows the individual, but this is Gem Knight FTK. We put Master Diamond to three. They are playing two copies. They aim to burn their opponents out as fast as possible. Not much has changed in the interim between Gem Knight bans and now. I guess three reasoning is maybe also okay for the deck, but it remains to be seen just how good it is. Uh, I don't know. I don't know about this one. This one seems like a stretch for me. Maverick CXX on True Draco, and boy, doesn't this list just just put you to sleep immediately. <laughs> doesn't this list just put you to sleep immediately? Not only is Masterpiece the True Draco slaying uh, man at three, they've elected to play two. The more important unhits for this are Dynamite Knight 2-3, they are playing three of that and two copies of True King's Return, and three copies of Into the Void, a very powerful draw spell. They also have access to set rotation because they can now jam a copy of Chicken Game as well. These pot ratios leave a little to be desired, but I guess we'll find out if they're effective. Next up is Orcist. Orcist is a deck that got a lot from this ban list. All of the dangers unbanned. Dark Refer to three. I mean, absolutely poggers. Two copies of uh, Rusty Bardish in the extra deck because, of course, it is now semied. Uh, I don't know. I Orcist is still Orcist. No matter how unbricky you make this deck, I absolutely trust this individual's ability to draw three called by the grave, Orcist Babel, and, uh, I don't know, Crescendo. Nerd Factor is on Pendulum. Uh, we have a lot of different Pendulum decks enter, and this is the one that I think is the least oppressive to the eyes. Uh, there's a lot that came off for Pendulum, and it's hard to, after zero days of testing, just ask them to go into a blind and figure out what's good, but I think this is pretty close. Uh, they've got three copies of Astrograph Sorcerer. Again, without Electromite, this card is absolutely not a problem. Three copies of Double Iris Magician. Similarly, not an issue without Electromite, though probably wouldn't be an issue with Electromite either. And they're also playing some of the old OEM staples, things like Pendy Sork, um, the Time Pendulum Graph packages, and I'm shocked to see a Danglong Suite as well makes its way into this list. High hopes for this one. Cyberstein FTK. Nothing to say here. I, just nothing to say here. It is, it is Cyberstein FTK. So you might be wondering why some of these cards are being played. Everything here is either part of a combo 
or is an enabler for Halka Fibrax, which is necessary to get to the combos. Uh, you aim to make a bunch of Goyo defenders, and then Blaze Phoenix your opponent out using Cyberstein's effect while equipped with that little troublesome equip spell you see right there. Just an absolutely miserable list. This is VW. I mean, it's VW. Not much to say here. No, um, no copies of... No copies of VFD, which is nice. I guess the interesting part of this is they have the sideboard that, con that contains a Nail Shadal Ariel and a Beatrice. That's pretty funny. But, uh, that's, that's about it. This is Sir Eminon's list, and it strikes fear into my little boy heart. This is horrifying. I mean, oh god. <laughs> oh boy. Um, this is not an FTK, uh, but about as close as you can get. It is a Dark Warrior list that aims to make use of the fact that a hero lives, Vion, Malicious are all at three, all accessible at any point in the game. I mean, I am hard-pressed to think that this is going to be a problem. And notably, uh, Instant Fusion is in here without uh, MER. So this aims to prove that it's not uh, the new eyes restrict that's the issue with Instant Fusion. It's Instant Fusion full stop. And we shall see. This is Wind Up. Uh, Wind Up is a deck that I'm not super familiar with, so every time it makes any board, I am shocked to my core. But we've seen it go almost infinite in previous matches. The only problem with the deck is that it doesn't really have anything to end on. Even with infinite material, the best you're getting is a Megaclops plus an Appaloosa, which is hardly the end of the world. I'm excited to see what this produces, especially if the Rabbit comes up at all, but we'll see. And finally, the worst deck with, uh, you know, apologies to Rebecca, I suppose, is this one. It's, uh, it's Yada Turbo, baby. It is Yada Turbo, baby. Uh, it, it is simply Yada Turbo. The idea is you can use the Shino Birds to shuffle your opponent's monsters or spell traps, and then summon a Yada from deck, ignoring its summoning conditions and getting around its special summon restriction. So you can, uh, I don't know, maybe make a Shino Bird and then Yada them out of the game super quickly, but I don't think it's very likely. Uh, best of luck to Rebecca, but <laughs> we'll see. And that's that. Those are your 16 duelists. One of them is going to walk with the ultimate prize, the ability to tell me I told you so, and also a box of the most recent set. All right, chat, it's time for our first match. Burrito Man 93 on Drytron versus Rycape on Gem Knight. And away we go. Hey, it worked. All right. Chat seems to think that I believe Gem Knight is going to take this. Jesus Christ, 65% of you think Gem Knight is going to take this. You thought Drytron was tier zero. All right, here we go. So Rycape is going first. They're going to lead with a copy of Reasoning. They're going to fire off this Reasoning and miss. They missed the Reasoning. Okay, they're going to go for the second Reasoning, and they hit Parallel Exceed. Now, Parallel Exceed does trigger, so you get another uh, Parallel Exceed from deck. They're then going to Normal Summon a Crystal Rose and Special Summon an Ad Emancipator Researcher. From here, they can activate Researcher's Effect, finding off the top. Oh, a lot of good ones. They'll go for Gem Knight Lapis. Important to get Gem Knights. They'll go for a Cross Sheep and then trigger the other Parallel Exceed in hand. From here, they can go to Gallant Granite and into Phantom Quartz. Phantom Quartz is busted, gets them a Gem Knight Fusion in hand. And a Droll and Lockbird coming down. That is it for the FTK. Oh my god. God. Oh no. Okay. Um, I guess they're going to loop Crystal Rose just a little bit. They can go into another Phantom Quartz and then trigger Crystal Rose to bring it back using its effect again. No hard ones per turns on any of this garbage, by the way. Getting another monster to hand, then firing off a Gem Knight Fusion in order to make a Lapis Lazuli. They can't. No way. No way can they OTK through this. Okay, there's Brilliant. So Lapis Lazuli goes first. It does 25. They trigger Lazuli to special summon or to add back one of those. They go into a Master. They trigger Master. This is only 50. They don't have it. No way. Yeah, okay, I was gonna say, FTK through Droll, unlikely. So, Appaloosa Master Pass, kill me right now or I'm going to burn you to death. Burrito begins with a Cyber Emergency, follows it up with an Alpha Thub, and they'll go for an Appaloosa, but oh my god, they had not only Orange Light, but also Ava. That is just devastating. Absolutely devastating. Oh my god. 
okay, well, they're going to go for a Gamma, uh, pitching this Ben 10, and then they'll get a Manju to hand. I believe that's going to be the end of the game. Manju is going to add a copy of Meteonis Drytron. They'll go into an Anima and make a Union Carrier. They will trigger Union Carrier in order to equip from hand, actually, a copy of Dawn Knight, then bring back the Ben 10, triggering the Drytron in Graveyard, targeting this copy of Alpha to get it back in hand, and Delta, which they sent off the Dawn Knight to go ahead and draw a card. They will Ben 10 for a copy of Natasha, and then they will Meteoris for the Natasha before using Natasha's effect to gain a little bit of life points. Very important versus this, and go into Cerberus, destroying the Master Diamond. From here, they can Natasha to get the Brilliant Diamond, and uh, I, I believe that is all she wrote. I can't imagine they can come back from this. In fact, they won't even have an opportunity to. Out comes the Boral Sword, and down goes the Gem Knight player. Shocking! Shocking game one, I'm sure. So here's game two. And unsurprisingly, uh, Rykape is choosing to go first. This time they do hit the reasoning. They go into a Lapis and then trigger the effect of Parallel Exceed in hand from the Link Spider Link Summon. They will get two Parallel Exceeds from deck and then go into a Gallant Granite. They will trigger Gallant Granite. And there's the Orange Light and there's the Cold by the Grave! See, chat, it's important that we put Cold by the Grave to three. It won't change anything. Uh, just draw a bell. Uh, they'll go for a Rose next and then trigger the effect of the Lapis in Graveyard to get a Lazuli back to hand. Then summon it with the... Link Spider, so stupid. They get a copy of Phantom Quartz and an Obsidian. From here, they can go into a Cross Sheep, and they have the Fusion, so they'll go into a Zirconia, which triggers the Obsidian and the effect of Cross Sheep. They're going to bring back both the Rose and, from Graveyard, the Lapis. From here, they can go into a Phantom Quartz and a Rose. They'll trigger Rose to send a copy of Lazuli and add the Lapis back to hand. They'll activate Fusion again in order to make Lady Lazuli and then Rose's effect. They don't have enough material on field, do they? Out comes the Brilliant Diamond, for sure, and then we'll activate Crystal Rose. We're going to send a copy of Lazuli to summon the Lap- or to add the Lapis again, and then Fusion to hand. I don't think you can make it they'll go lazily for 25 brilliant diamond they'll go master diamond for 25 uh can they even without droll it's just appaloosa pass damn this deck sucks all right af out comes fafnir out comes nova out comes alpha they'll go into a copy of anima and jesus christ that's the wrong zone all right so uh, appaloosa will negate it that's one down they normaled the dawn knight drew it twice they actually drew two normal summons here they're gonna go for the cerberus and the dawn knight so they can't stop the cerberus they'll go to the battle phase and walk over the appaloosa but you have to get over the master diamond wait what the heck oh my god wait they just couldn't out the master diamond this is the worst FDK I've ever seen. It's a two-turn FDK. And here they are, just getting enough materials on board to kill with it. All right, they're going to go for a Phantom Quartz, then trigger the Phantom Quartz in order to get an Obsidian to hand. We could just OTK at this point, getting it for 18 and 1450. All right, looks like we are going to a Game 3, ladies and gentlemen, despite the fact that I did not, did, did not think that that was going to happen. All right, now it's time for that old important game three, and unsurprisingly, Drytron is going to go first. They're going to lead with the copy of Preparation of Rights for a Ben 10. From here, they are going to activate Alpha pitching the Ben 10, and then trigger the effect of Ben 10 in Graveyard as well. They add a Ben 10 to hand off of the Alpha, and unfortunately, they can't lock the specials. They're going to have to go for Manju and a Meteonis. From here, they're going to fire off a Foolish Burial and no Droll, GG, Delta in Grave, bringing back Delta and revealing Meteonis to draw a card, then triggering Ben 10 to get a Herald of Ultimateness. I hesitate to think how they're getting out of this one. Union Carrier triggers here. They're going to go for a Dawn Knight and a Meteonis for a copy of Ben 10. They'll trigger the effect of Dawn Knight and the effect of Zeta. This is perfect time to fire off an Abiru. Oh my god. Wow. Okay, that is a huge one. They will add a Lancia off of the Ben 10, then summon back the Zeta and the Gamma by pitching the Zeta. That's going to bring back two materials, which can turn into a fucko, but that's it. Wait a minute. Okay, Lancia and draw phase. What can you do through Lancia in this deck? Well, it's going to start with the Crystal Rose and be followed up with a Researcher. Researcher is going to trigger. We got to find something off the top. It is... Just a, a whole bunch of lapises. We'll take a lapis for sure. We'll go into a link spider. We'll trigger the effect of crystal rose. No parallel exceed this time. We'll use Lazuli's effect to get the lapis back into hand. Then we'll trigger the effect of the link spider to summon a lapis from our hand to go into a phantom quartz. We'll trigger the phantom quartz and get a copy of fusion to hand. We'll go into a cross sheep, then fire off the fusion, and out comes zirconia. That's enough to trigger the cross sheep, which is all we need. We'll get a crystal rose again. No hard ones per turn on this. We'll go for Lazuli again. No HOPT for a lapis to hand and fire off the phantom quartz for a brilliant diamond. Brilliant diamond triggers, and we only have to do it twice because of the monsters on our opponent's side of the field wait 4k into appaloosa go to the battle phase fucko triggers and i guess we will pass turn well that i mean that's fucko that is fucko okay well they're gonna go for zeta appaloosa still might be enough i'm not sure gamma's effect appaloosa triggers and holy shit are we just dead to apo are you kidding me we're just dead to apo oh my god called by the grave the last card and the tier zero super th threat, Drytron, has fallen in round number one. 
to Gemini. Jesus. All right. To the 65% of you who predicted Gemini, congratulations. You are now the happy recipients of a ton of points. And let's prepare for the next round. So it's time for match two, and uh, we are not off to a good start. Watching a deck that I expected to still be really good die to an FTK is uh, a little debilitating. Uh, shakes my foundation just a little bit. But realistically, it wasn't really an FTK. It was just Appaloosa Pass three games in a row. And Drytron, for as tier zero as you all seem to think it is, really can't actually beat that. For round two, we have Cyberstein FTK versus Virtual World. Another opportunity for an FTK to out a tier one threat. Let's see if they can pull it off. So we've got Kaboom on Cyberstein versus Gaia67 on Virtual World. And let's see how this plays out. We're beginning with a D.Va. This is best case for the Cyberstein player. We're going to go from D.Va into Neptabyss. That'll trigger Goyo Defender into Goyo Defender into Goyo Defender. Broken and... What? What the fuck? This, this... Wait, this can't be the end of the combo. Do you have to draw stuff too? No! <laughs> All right, so the Virtual World player just making Virtual World plays Sans VFD, and turns out that's completely fine. They're going to go Lin Lin into Ching Long. They'll trigger the effect of Ching Long for a Lao Lao, and then they will pitch 2 2. They'll activate Chu, uh, Chu Chase effect for an, a 3, actually, going for the Gossip Shadow, and then Lao Lao's effect, bringing back the 2 2. We've got two sixes, so we might as well make a Tolmy. We'll trigger Tolmy's effect and get back the Lao Lao for next turn before proceeding to battle phase and Defender into Defender into Defender, I suppose. Okay, sure. Um. That's 2,700, and we will pass turn. Uh, this is not a very powerful end board, but it is a negate. Okay, here, we're going to go for it again. So Blackwing Sting the Poison into Pin the Heat and Droll and Lockbird, the sixth card in the hand. Pin the Bullseye Triggers. They'll take 200 points of damage. They'll go for Halka Fibrax, and that'll get ashed. Oh no, finally, when they have the stuff, it's not enough. And that will be a quick game one for Virtual World. Who could have expected that? Who could have expected that? Certainly not me. All right, let's, uh, let's check out game two real quick. I think, unsurprisingly, the FTK player is going again, and they've found Halka Fibrax. They're going to go into Lefty Driver, into Defender, into nothing, into nothing. They're getting gammed. Holy guacamole, this dies to one hand trap. They're going to activate Instant Fusion. Okay, seems like you could have done that to begin with for an independent Nightingale, and then trigger it for 500 before passing turn. Uh, well, you know, it, it, it truly... Oh, wait, no, wait. The VW player sucks too. They've set one card and passed. I guess that's VW. They get to go for it again. They'll normal summon a copy of Deep Sea Diva. That's going to summon a copy of Neptibus, the Atlantean Prince. Okay, let's try this again. We only have two defenders, so we'll get two of them. Go to the battle phase and... What is the point of this deck? What what exactly is the point of this deck? Oh, well, Disparity will get them out of it. They go for three, and what do you know? There's a Qinglong. Qinglong will probably be enough. Nope, getting a Droll and Lockbird again. We will activate Gate and then ZC. I guess we just needed to be able to flip up the trap. We're going to uh, activate the Qinglong in Graveyard in order to get a Lulu, and this should be the end of the game. We'll go for Lulu's effect and uh, send a Qinglong as well, getting a Lao Lao. From here, we can go into a Juju, and I love these Synchro Monsters. If anything, we should ban VFD just so we get to see the Synchro Monsters. They're super sweet. Ver uh, Vermilion Dragon Mech at the end of this, getting eaten by Cult by the Grave, but not a big deal. They'll go to the battle phase and walk over what they can. They're going to go for Defender's Effect, so they will take 350, followed by 900, and then uh, the turn will end, I suppose. Again, not that impressive, but like Salaman Great, it really just gets to do it every turn. They're going for the Halka Fibrax. They'll go for it here. They're going to get a copy of Wielder and then pass. What is, what is the point of this deck? I... I am so confused. Oh, kaboom. I'm sorry, but... An FTK with a 10% FTK rate is not going to cut it. It's it's just not going to work. Steven Uchicha, thank you for the uh, subscription. And um, yeah, this is this is not close. They're going for a 9. They're making Enter Blanier. I guess to banish the Halk before they can tag out. Not like they probably have a copy of anything to tag out into. And this is going to be it. No, it is not. They're at 50 life points. One more shot for the FTK player on the 7th TK Reynoud into the enter Blanier. and that's i mean that's disappointing would i say that it was shocking i would not say that it was shocking a quick and easy 2-0 for vw and i apologize to the 25 percent of you who thought that uh cyberstein was going to clutch this out but uh just not a good day for ftks well, it is time for game three. Crazy Wizza on Dinosaur versus Josh Butcher on Danger Dark World. And you all thought the Danger Dark World was going to be 
tier zero. Everyone seems to think when I unban the dangers that somehow dark worlds will magically become playable. Like they don't have the same lines of text on them. Suddenly they're going to gain extra effects. I promise you the deck sucks, but don't take my word for it. Let's check out this bad little match. We've got uh, two individuals who are quite good at their decks going up against each other. And realistically, you know, I personally expect Dinosaur to absolutely wallop Danger Dark World. I don't think it's uh, honestly even a discussion. Uh, it, it seems pretty impossible that they would even be able to take a singular game, let alone the match. So all I have to do is take these replays here and put them in the folder. And we are off to the races. So here is game one. And Pot of Extravagance coming out for what I can only imagine is the dinosaur player. We're going to lead with a copy of Lost World and fire off a Miscellaneous Horse. Miscellaneous Horse's effect here is going to get a copy of Animador and Archosaur. We can trigger Animador and Archosaur's effect and then trigger Lost World's effect in a new chain. That's going to allow us to destroy, ooh, not a baby, but an Ultimate Conductor Tyranno. Well, you gotta do what you gotta do. We're going to go into a Pancratops and trigger the Pancratops targeting the little token so we can set a baby source into an overraptor overraptor will trigger here and we'll add a copy of baby source to hand and we have not yet normaled so we can go from overraptor into pancratops triggering baby source for a copy of giant rex this is decent we've got dolka pancratops two set and pass liftlock city legends thank you for the ten dollars the danger dark world player is going to begin with a dark greffer followed up with an allure of darkness they're going to normal summon a copy of dark greffer and destroy lost world only to be eaten by a called by the grave see it can come to three it's good they'll go for a dark greffer next and get eaten by a second one okay maybe it's just a little bit too good they'll go for a shade brigandine here they have enough for four and they'll zephyros it back to hand i believe that's once per turn but i'm not sure they'll pancratops here before a four can be made and it's phoenix time baby they're gonna go for the lost world obviously that's going to be prevented by the dolka they'll activate the effect of orochi in sequence but dolka isn't even once per chain oh my god they'll set one and pass close to taking the board out but not enough they'll go to the battle phase and down comes a gizmec orochi only to be eaten by the bell off the top i mean i think you're pretty happy Happy if you're the Dark World player here, you're still in a pretty commanding position. They didn't have a follow-up. They're going to go for a Danger Nessie only card in the hand, so they'll be able to pop it, and then they'll add from deck to hand a copy of Jackalope. They'll trigger the effect of Jackalope. That allows them to get from their deck probably an 8, so they can use that and Orochi in order to go into something crazy. They'll go for Danger Response Team in order to bounce that card, and then trigger Danger, Danger Response Team to get a Bigfoot to hand. They'll go for Bigfoot and pop the Lost World. They're just going to eat the board here. It's time for Orochi to do what it does best, be a control finisher, getting over the Dolka, and then passing turn. Okay, one card left for dino can they do it i think it's pretty likely but not with this hand gonna set one and pass and normal summon snow activate shade bring dean we might actually just be able to do it outcomes emerald will trigger the effect of emerald targeting all those danger monsters putting most of them back into the hand and drawing a card unfortunately not something playable they'll get in for half life points but still has to live one more turn okay they're gonna draw for turn over after a bust baby and crazy wizard surrenders uh-oh uh-oh uh -oh. Okay, uh, <laughs> let's, uh, let's, uh, go to game two here. Uh, okay, I imagine Dinosaur is going to be going first again. They're going to normal summon a copy of Animador and Archosaur. They do get to pop a Pancratops again. Where are the fucking babies? They're going to go for Link Rebo and a Secure Garden before Evolution pilling out an Ultimate Conductor Tyranno. They'll set one and pass. Holy, are they going to lose? All right, so they'll go for an Armageddon Knight. That's a crazy top deck. Out comes Malicious. Now we have three of these, so we'll go for a Malicious. They'll activate Ultimate Conductor Tyranno now. Seems good. They'll go for a Chusinoko after setting a card, and they hit it. Wow, American Sniper out here. Thunderbird next. If they hit the Thunderbird, not a big deal. Thankfully, they hit the Snow, and oh, Called by the Grave is perfect for that. All right, uh, next we'll go for DDR to bring back the Snow. That's okay. We'll activate Bigfoot's effect and clean up the board. Holy shit, is this an FTK? Phantom Knights of Rusty Martishan. Oh, Gamma's the last card. Okay, we're not dead here. Thank you for the food. You're welcome. Alright, that's gonna be the end of the turn. We'll pass it back to the dino player. I'm gonna lead with a... What the fuck? Time Wizard of Tomorrow, baby! <laughs> and they call it wrong, even. Alright, they're gonna go for a, um... A copy of Malicious here, then... Dark World Dealings uh, for a, oh god, for a Phantom Knights of Torn scale. Get in for 19. This deck really lacks any offensive pressure whatsoever and put the Giant Rex into the graveyard and Miscellaneousaurus off the top, baby, banishing four, including the Giant Rex. This is totally the end of the game. That's, I mean, that's so pathetic. I'm, I'm so sorry. I, I really feel, 
Oh, I feel so bad. Popping the uh, Over Raptor to get a double Evo pill. Going into Secure Gardener so they have the material for the double Evo pill and getting a Tyranno. They're going to go to the battle phase and get in for a ton of damage. What an insane top deck. All they needed was a Lost World. Some kind of whiff for once. Danger Dark World so close to taking it in a two-game set. But Macro Cosmos flexing the floodgates and that's going to be enough for our Danger Dark World pilot to surrender. Okay, have faith, chat. Have faith. Dino can still take this quite easily. It's time for game three. They are on the draw and geez can dino even play on the draw i wonder all right we're gonna lead with a copy of armageddon knight and it's gonna be met with a gamma nice gamma in the opener all right in 60 cards uh danger jackalope comes up next they'll trigger the effect of danger jackalope for a uh, mothman and trigger the effect of bigfoot they go for the bigfoot and danger response team putting the mothman back in hand alongside the driver enjoy that one they're gonna activate response team and then activate the effect of dogman and draw a card pitching a snow what an unreal rip that gets them a dark world dealings they'll fire off a dealings why would you get dealings here ah because you have a malicious in hand they're gonna go for a malicious and follow it up with a copy of orochi and there we go um from here we can go into a phantom knights of rusty bardish we'll activate his effect in order to set a fog blade they'll activate silent boots effect for another fog blade and that's going to be it so an interrupted turn but two negates is probably still pretty good they're going to go for set rotation here getting lost world and dragonic diagram lost world comes down they're going to fossil dig lost world fossil dig must be nice normal summon a soul eating over after and trigger the effect of lost world though fog blade while they can still target and miscellaneous saurus the last card in hand going to be met with the second fog blade uh this does not do what you want does it no, it does. Okay, cool. So, Miscellaneous Source out for the Archosaur. They'll trigger the effect of the Archosaur, and it is Baby Source. So, you're telling me... You're telling me that this hand was Gamma, Misk, Lost World, Fossil Dig. Pretty good. P pretty good. Pretty good. Seems all right. Double Ultimate Conductor Tyrant. Oh, my God. We're dead here. Oh, my God. We're dead here. Oh, no. And Dino will be making it out. All is right in the world. Miscellaneous Horse is still a bullshit card and realistically should probably go to one. I, I, I might move on that one. Okay, everybody, it is time for round four. Bird Up versus Empty Jar. Bird Up, the worst deck in the tournament versus Empty Jar, a deck that literally has never won one of these, ever. It's never won a single game in one of these. That's a lie. It won exactly one game. All right, so let's see who won the die roll, and it was Empty Jar. Okay, congratulations to our Empty Jar player for advancing. They're going to go for a Rota for 80 changer, and Droll and Lockburn in the opening hand, baby! <laughs> You know, it's as simple as that, chat. Uh, I, I mean, a lot of people have been saying this, and I think it's time for me to weigh in as well. Just draw Droll and Lockbird, idiot. Just draw Droll and Lockbird, fool. What are you, some kind of stupid moron? Wow, and they go for the Tri-Brigade Flagette effect. Only two still have a target after the reincarnation resolves. Very funny. Sovereignty Pass is probably enough to win the game. At end phase, will trigger it, and I don't know what you're going to. Apex Avian is probably good enough. Let's pass back. Didn't even go to combat. Well, one day of peace. Okay, into the void time. Uh, and Droll and Lock again! Chat, there is a god, and it's Rin PG333, the smartest motherfucker on the planet. Just was able to draw two Droll and Lock. If, if you want to be good at Yu-Gi-Oh, you have a simple choice to be made here. We're going to go for the Hray here, which gets to 48 before we get in for 37. And I believe this is the end of the game. Maybe not with the Morphing Jar, but I don't imagine there's anything they could draw that would stop it. Barrier Statue Lethal. Let's go to game two. Who could have expected this, chat? Who could have expected the Droll and Lock being a playable hand trap would spell trouble for Empty Jar? Well, let's see if they can overcome it in game two. They're going first. Oh no, they forced the Bird Up player to go first. Why, why the fuck did they do that? Tanky and to reborn the Cobalt Sparrow. Trigger the Cobalt Sparrow's effect for a Nerval. <laughs> Buddy, you are fucking this up. Rin, is Rin in chat? Can you please at Rin? Rin, what are you doing? You're adding cards from your deck to your hand. That's just making it easier for the Empty Jar player. Oh my god, just terrible. The only way to play this game is to pass. All right, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, get a Saros here, and then we're going to normal summon a Saros. Then we're going to trigger it for three. We're going to get a Simor. We'll go into Link Haribo, and we uh, that's the end of the game, buddy. I, I don't know what on earth you do if you're the... One Day of Peace is a good start. Book of Moon? Okay, all right. Out comes Hat Trigger. Out comes another One Day of Peace. We'll normal summon an AD Changer, a Feather of the Phoenix to get back the One Day of Peace. We'll go for an Anima. Trigger the Anima. It'll be negated. Big surprise. AD Changer? I... <laughs> And called by the Grave Last card to negate the Link Karibo effect. That means they will be able to prevent uh, this from locking them out of any summons, but they, they won't be able to do anything else. That is, uh, that's, that's it. So I guess what I would have to say about that match is uh, Bandroll, 
uh, 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 too good, uh, and, uh, <laughs> maybe next time we'll unban empty, or, uh, cyber jar. This is, this is pathetic. I, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry to anyone I conned into doing this. <gasps> Divine Wind showed up! Shit, it's Divine Wind! Okay, one day of peace. Ash Blossom the one day so they don't get the negation. And that's gonna be the end of the game. Stupid. This is very dumb. <laughs> Empty jar is still bad. How could it have happened? I don't understand. So it is time for our next one. I'm talking about Dark Warrior versus Chaos Thunder, a match that we absolutely got right the first time and did not have to restart because I accidentally loaded in the previous replays. We've got two very competent duelists, Seb Toe on the Chaos Thunder deck and Sir Eminon on the Warrior one. Very powerful strategies, very intelligent duelists, and ideally, one of them is going to blast the other out of the water. Let's see exactly what happens. Take it over here. And it looks like Chaos Thunder has won the die roll. We're going into Thunder Dragon. And Drollin Lockbird coming down. Simple as. Just draw Drollin Lockbird in your 60 card deck, idiot. All right, they're going to go for a Thunder Dragon Hawk into Roar. That's going to get an IP Masquerade and trigger the effect of Roar for a Dark. And you can't really do anything with it right now. Normal Summon a Brotar. Pass. Looking good. Looking good. All right, Normal Summon a Neo Space Connector. And with no interruption, we're going into an Aqua Dolphin. Or trigger the effect of Aqua Dolphin. Pitching a Malicious. Jesus Christ. We'll activate the effect of Malicious in order to get a Malicious from deck. And from here, we can go into a copy of Icehold. We'll trigger the effect of Icehold and get a copy of Giant Gear Freed Man to Hand. We'll trigger the effect of Icehold again, sending four. That's going to get an Armageddon Knight from deck, whose effect we will activate in order to send a Plague Spreader. We'll go for Connector's effect. Connector has an effect for an Aqua Dolphin. They will Dragon Dark here for a Dragon Dark, at which point we will Aqua Dolphin again, not once per turn. Very stupid. From here, we'll go into an Opelousa and trigger the effect of Malicious again. After Afterwards, we're going to activate the graveyard effect of Plague Spreader Zombie. Bring that sucker out. IP Masquerade time, and nope, that's getting negated absolutely 100%. It's time for Halka Fibrax, a post Appaloosa, going into a Despot 001 and an Aurora Dawn. Aurora Dawn does not have to be in the extra monster zone. We're going to get three tokens and trigger the 001 into the graveyard. From here, we can activate the effect of Power Tool Dragon, triggering its effect to get one of three equip spells to hand, and then triggering the effect of Aurora Dawn, sending two cards to the graveyard for a Colt Wing. We'll trigger Colt Wing, and we do still have a Mecha Phantom Beast. It doesn't necessarily have to be Aurora Dawn, it can be a token. We'll bring back the 001 and go into a Herald of the Arclight, triggering the effect of the Phoenix Blade as well. From here, we can activate DDR in order to bring back Plague Spreader Zombie and go into a copy of Roland. Roland plus a 7 plus a 3. I think we have uh, a plan for this. We'll activate Plague Spreader one last time, going into a Charles and making a Borload Savage Dragon. Jesus Christ. This is... That's... Yeah, that's, uh, that's the end of the game. Holy shit, that was not close. Oh my god. All right, time for game two. All right, game two time. Uh, Danger Jackalope coming out first. Uh, Thunder Dragon coming out second. No Droll this time, so we will get to see what this deck can do. Ch Noko coming down, summoning that and drawing a card, then normal summoning a Dragon Dark to go into Masquerina, so we can proc the Dragon Dark and get a copy of Roar. We'll trigger Roar and then summon back the... Oh, go get back the duo, which we can then summon before passing. That's... That's not enough, I don't think. All right, Invoked Raijin time. We're going to go ahead and target the uh, Thunder Dragon duel, which prompts a very early Nightmare Unicorn. That means that Raijin did exactly what it had to. They'll go for Tear Scale afterwards, pitching a copy of Ancient Cloak and Sebel Surrender. That... So, like, yes, Sir Eminon's deck is busted. That just makes me think that Chaos Thunder sucks shit. All right, so it is time for our next match. We've got Space Dandy 1993 on Magical Explosion versus Monarch on Orcus. And let me tell you, both of these lists look very good, but one of them looks very stupid, in fact. I'm excited to see if they can magically explode, I suppose. A lot comes down to the die roll, of course. Let's see what happens. Okay, so it looks like Magical Explosion has won the die roll, and I congratulate them on game one. They're going to go for the four gates. From here, we can go into S0, or we can go ahead and send a copy of Cursed Bamboo Sword. We're going to get a Golden Bamboo Sword to hand. From here, we can activate Cursed Bamboo Sword and fire off the Golden Bamboo Sword. Let's see that Droll Knock Border. You are dead. Okay, uh, we'll go for an Into the Void, followed by a copy of Hand Destruction. We're going to trigger the effect of the Cursed Bamboo Sword for a Golden Bamboo once again. We'll trigger off a Spellbook of Secrets as well for a Spellbook Magician of Prophecy, and then Normal the Spellbook Magician of Prophecy, because we have not yet committed to a Normal. We'll go ahead and fire off the copy of Spellbook of Knowledge to be met with an Ash Blossom Pain. From here, we can go into a Golden Bamboo Sword, and then Memories of Hope off the top draw for well tune table of contents but you saw that they sent one of the targets already and ugh, looks like they drew into another one another numeron network as well they're gonna allure of darkness and they do have a target it's the wall they'll fire off another into the void and an upstart goblin we are getting dangerously close into the void here hand destruction we're down to eight cards set to pass are they both magical explosion is it enough all right let's see one two 48 48 Great game. Good game. Very good game.
Very smart. Very good game. What I liked the most is that there was lots of interesting counterplay between the two of them. All right, let's go to game two. This time, the Orchestra player at least gets to go first. Let's see what they intend to do with it. Lead with a return. Activate Nessie. Every danger in the universe. They hit Nessie. N they hit Nessie. Five card hand. Jackalope next. Okay, they didn't hit Jackalope at least. Uh, Chusinoko as well. And they hit a fog blade. That should be enough. They'll go for Gizmek Orochi, the Serpentrion Sky Slasher, and make Bardish. Bardish pass, baby. Bardish pass, baby. What's in that banished pile? Uh, what the fuck? This must be... Yeah, this is a fog blade. All right. Uh, Allure of Darkness and a Spellbook Magician of Prophecy. From here we can go into... I think you would probably want to spend your Phantom Knights of Fog Blade on that sucker. They're going to fire off a Spellbook of Knowledge, and then afterwards they're going to activate a uh, Into the Void, into an Into the Void, into a Terraforming. That Terraforming is going to turn into a Numeron Network. Numeron Network's effect is going to trigger. We're going to send from deck... You know the drill. A copy of Numeron Calling, Outcome Four Gates, and a Cursed Bamboo Sword follows it up. We're going to go for a Golden Bamboo Sword that's going to draw true two and a Memories of Hope drawing four. Void number two. Tune Table of Contents. I think we are out of TTCs. We might have one more. Yep. We'll fire it off for the last Tune Table of Contents. We'll go for Numeron Network. We'll go for Allure of Darkness. Draw a couple of cards. Banish our entire hand! They whiffed! They whiffed! All right, well, congratulations to Orcus. A very good one. They'll go for Golden Bamboo Sword. No way. Oh, well, no. They're going to win because they still have gate access. They can get in, I don't think, for 8,000 here. Yeah, Fogblade, one of these suckers. But uh, drastically lowers the amount necessary to Magical Explosion. They're going to go for a Utopic Zexal Main Phase 2. Add a copy of Gold in the hand. And then pass turn Gizmak at end step. That card goes to the graveyard by the effect of you know what. And double Magical Explosion will clean it up. Stupidest. Stupidest game I have ever seen. Just very silly. Okay, I... I may have to rethink some of this. Maybe Into the Void to 3 was too good. Maybe Into the Void to 3 was too good. I will say for sure, it does give me hope that no matter what we end ban from this terrible ass deck, Orcus still, at any point, has the absolute power to die immediately for no reason. It doesn't matter. You That, that deck had no scraps, and it's still bricked. How? <laughs> it's It's immaculate. The only deck that can do that. All right, it is time for our next match. We have Stack Smashing Detected on Windup versus Nerd Factor on Pendulums. Very heads up Pendulum list. Uh, Windup, of course, can go infinite at any given time. Very excited to see what happens here. And we're also going to start a prediction because I forgot to do that. 1K Andy, by the way. I don't think it's even worth it. You all are going to go 99% for Pend. All right, we're going to begin. And who won the die roll? It was Windups. Okay, so we're going to go from Magician into Shark. That triggers the effect of Magician, getting a Magician from deck. We're going to activate the effect of Shark to decrease by one. From here, we can activate Magician's effect to summon a Rat from deck. We're going to overlay for a Papli Operative? That seems pretty bad. For a Rat to attack, which triggers its effect and summons the Magician? Silly. Out comes Zen Maity. We'll trigger the effect of Zen Maity for another Shark. From here, we can trigger Magician's effect for a Shark from deck. We'll go into a copy of Zen Maintenance. We'll trigger the effect of Zen Maintenance for a Factory. We will activate the Factory's effect and then summon a Hasty Horse. We'll go for Shark's effect here and then trigger the effect of Factory to add a Rabbit to hand. Afterwards, we're going to overlay for a Shark Lancer. Special summon a Silent Angler. Go to Bahamut Shark and end on a totally awesome Appaloosa. This is a decent setup. It's Valiant Shark Lancer, awesome Appaloosa. Instant Fusion leading for the uh, Pendulum opponent, and it's MER. They'll go for a Stargazer Magician and a Wisdom Eye Magician, trigger the effect of Wisdom Eye, and then activate its effect for... Wow, holy shit. Oh my god. Oh my god, what a chain. Okay, so it's Appaloosa negating, Millenniumizer Stricter negating, Totally Awesome negating, Astrograph Sorcerer, but Nerd Factor will still be able to resolve the effect of the Star Pendulum Graph and add a Pendulum to hand. They're going to Pendulum Summon 2, I believe, one of which is 3, one of which is a Harmonizing Magician, which Appaloosa will, of course, be negating. From here, we can go into a Halka Fibrax and activate the effect of Halka Fibrax, and that's the last Appaloosa negate. We can go into a Selene and then trigger the effect of the Selene. That's three counters. We'll activate the effect of Selene to bring back the Millenniumizer Strict and go into an Access Code Talker. Oh, it's just going to be an access code setup. That's probably good enough. Down goes the Lancer. Down goes the Factory. And we'll go to the battle phase. Walking over the set Astrograph and proceeding to the end step can wind up clean this up. Rat's a good start. Shark start. Shark follows up. Obviously, we have to walk over the MER first. We're going to use Rat's effect to summon back the Zen Maity. We'll activate the effect of Shark to go down to three. Then overlay for another Zen Maity. Zen Maity 
fires to get a rat from deck, and then rat will fire to summon a copy of Magician. We'll then go into a copy of Zen Maintenance, trigger Magician or Maintenance's effect for another factory. We'll activate Wind Up Magician's effect for a Wind Up Soldier from deck, then overlay for a Redoer and make Access Code Talker of our own. From here, we can go ahead and eat the entire board. We'll beat the Access Code Talker, we'll beat the Star Pendulum Graph, and shit, we don't have enough types. <clears throat> Redoer triggers, it's a monster. They'll go for Duelist Alliance off the top. It's Pendysork. Holy shit. All right, they're going to summon two. The Wisdom Eye Magician, the Pendulum Sork. Oop, and at the link point of the Access Code Talker, a monster as well. They're going to normal summon a Celestial Magician. Down comes Redoer. To the Banished Zone it goes. We'll call by the Grave, the Celestial Magician, and go into a Dark Requiem. Holy shit. No way that does it. Oh my god, what a game that Nerd Factor pulled out of the depths of his own ass. That's That was incredible. <clears throat> huge, huge. Oh my god. Alright, let's go to game two. Uh, I imagine that Windup will be going first again. Yep, factory opens are always pretty good. We'll go for a Gallus. Gallus sending Pankratops. That's a lot of damage. They'll go for Takatom Borg and make a Zen Maid. He's in Maid. He triggers here to get a copy of Windup Shark. We'll trigger the effect of factory to add from deck to hand a Shark. Then we'll go into a Zen Maintenance. We'll trigger Zen Maintenance's effect alongside the effect of Shark, summoning itself and triggering Zen Maintenance for another factory. We'll activate another factory. God, this card is so broken. They'll go for Maintenance... <clears throat> for Shark, rather, to get a Rat off of factory, and then Maintenance in order to tag into another Shark, and then pass turn. Okay, so I I guess that's it then, right? Uh, okay, Halka Fibrax time. We'll activate the effect of Halka Fibrax for a Tuning Magician. We'll go into a Selene. We'll trigger the effect of Selene. We will get back a copy of Tuning Magician from the graveyard, I imagine. We'll go into Tuning Magician's effect. We'll get 400 and lose 400 and go to battle. Wait, what the fuck? Apo for two? Did they both brick? Heavy Storm off the top to get the evenly matched. We'll go for a uh, wind-up rat afterwards in order to, uh, I guess, proc the Appaloosa before going to battle phase now that we can walk over it. And uh, in main phase two, what? A uh, shark effect? Okay, we'll go for a three. That allows us to go into Zen Maidy. We'll trigger Zen Maidy's effect. That summons from deck a copy of rat. We can trigger rat's effect for a rat. Oh, wait. They still might be able to pop off. Another Zen Maidy. Oh, my God. We'll go for a copy of wind-up magician, and then we'll go for a Zen Maintenance. Zen Maintenance triggers here. That's going to add a rat to hand. We can trigger the effect of magician. That's going to summon a magician from deck. We can overlay for a redoer and pass. That's decent. Redoer triggers, and it's a spell. They'll pass turn. We'll redoer for one in order to draw a card. It was Dark Ruler. Nerd Factor might have just overboarded. Gallus the Star Beast coming down, and this is lethal. Oh my god. What a terrible game. Well, uh, congratulations to the player that bricked the least hard, and now on to game three. <clears throat> All right, it's time for game three. It looks like the Pendulum player is going first. They're going to begin with a copy of Curtain Razor. They'll trigger the effect of Curtain Razor and summon its normal summon a White Wing Magician for Halka Fibrax, who is basically just Electromite. We'll get a Tuning Magician from deck, then set Wisdom Eye Magician, set Double Iris Magician, Jesus Christ. Go into Selene and trigger Selene. Do we have two? We only have two, right? Yeah, so we have to use Tuning Magician's effect here. 400 and 400 trade before we go into Appaloosa and trigger Wisdom Eye, popping itself for an Oaf Dragon. That triggers Astrograph Sorcerer. Okay, that's going to add a Wisdom Eye to hand. Next, we will Pendulum summon one, two, three. Four monsters and go into a boar load. Savage Dragon for three, equipping the Selene and a Time Star Magician, getting, I imagine, the trap card. No way harmonizing, in fact. I, it may not be able to do that. Okay. Pankratops coming down, walking over the Appaloosa. Could trade. Well, Pankratops next to fiend out the Savage. Okay, this this card might be a little too crazy. That was the entire negation of that board. Gallus goes for Angler, summon Gallus, go for Psychic Tracker, normal summon a Wind Up Magician, go into Zen Maity. Okay, next we're going to summon a Wind-Up Magician from deck. We'll activate Wind-Up Magician's effect for a rat. Next we're going to overlay for a Papli Operative. We'll activate Papli Operative's effect targeting the rat and then using the rat's effect in order to target the Magician. The Magician comes back. We'll special summon a copy of Wielder. Go into another Zen Maidy. We'll trigger Zen Maidy's effect for a shark. We'll trigger the effect of Magician here to get a Soldier from deck before going into a Megaclops! Holy guacamole. Oh my god, what an extender. Okay, so... We're going for Wind Up Shark here. We're going for Javaliant Shark Lancer and Redoer. Shark Lancer in order to get rid of the Time Star. And I mean, that's the end of the turn, but how the fuck does Pendulum out Mecha Clops? They're going to Pendulum. It's Harmonizing Curtain Razor, Harmonizing Triggers here. They're going to get a Purple Poison. They'll go into an Ignister. <gasps> well, that's a good one. Uh, that's going to get Shark Lancer, unfortunately. Um, they'll trade the Redoer for the Oaf Dragon activation. The normal summon a Harmonizing. Going for Selene number two. We now have an... We don't have enough spells walking over the Zen Maintenance. And Shark Lancer triggers as well, putting an Avarice on top. Oh, no! 
Time Pendulum Graph can get rid of the Mega Clops. That's funny. Um, and they are going to be able to get a Star Pendulum Graph to hand, but it seems like too little too late. They'll activate Pot of Avarice, and if it's anything competent, it looks like they have this in the bag. Gallus the Star Beast whips! Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, my God. The whiff on Gallus has cost them this game. All right, Pendulum still has to have an insane turn. They'll leave. Well, Pot of Desires is a good start. Uh, they're going to fire off a Star Pendulum Graph, fire off a White Wing Magician, Oaf Dragon Effect in order to get back this copy of Harmonizing. They're going to activate Time Pendulum Graph in order to pop the Valiant Shark Ray Lancer and then trigger the effect of Star Pendulum Graph to get the copy of Wisdom Eye to hand. They'll activate Wisdom Eye Magician, then activate Wisdom Eye Magician's effect. That's going to add to their... EMZ, a copy of Perform House Celestial, they'll summon two, including a Harmonizing for a Double Iris Magician that allows them to go into Evil Swarm Nightmare. This is still a very beatable board, but they're almost out of stuff on the Pendulum Player's side. Oh my god, they just need anything. Redoer Effect, they're gonna send everything, then set one. Is Nerd Factor going to walk with this by the seat of his pants? This is the stupidest game I've ever seen someone win. Passing back, not willing to switch that evil swarm to attack position because they're only at 300. They die to a normal summon. Oh my god. Oaf Dragon adding back the Celestial. Pendulum summoning one. Celestial and Curtain Razor going to the battle phase. Hitting over Droll and Lockbird. We are one turn away. Now or never, wind up player. Oh, Lightning Storm's good. Lightning Storm's a good start. You gotta have a normal. Oh my god. Holy shit, and Nerd Factor walks with it in the most scuffed pendulum game I have ever seen in my entire life. So it is time for the last match of round one. We've got a really baller one. We've got Rebecca on Shinobird Yadalak, a deck that just aims to summon Yada from deck and then lock their opponent, and Maverick CXX on True Draco, a deck that you all said was going to ruin the format, so we'll just have to see. All right, let's uh, let's jump in, buddies. All right, so it's time for game one. We're gonna begin with a copy of Pot of Duality. Looks like the Drew Draco player won the die roll, and there's the masterpiece. There it is. They, they passed it up. Card of Demise, the last card in hand, as always. At end step, they will send a copy of Dynamite Knight. That's what happens when you're playing more monsters. Lightning Storm. All right, so this is a pretty good start. Uh, we're gonna go for Ignis to add a card to hand, and then Stormforth, I guess. Pot of Disparity afterwards. So Lightning Storm, Pot of Disparity. That's um. It's a pretty good start. They banish six here, and they get a copy of Dino Wrestler Pankratops. Uh, they're going to go ahead and activate the effect of Incantation Talismandra. That's going to summon from deck a copy of Candall and trigger the effect of Candall for a copy of the Shinobird Ritual. They'll fire off Calling and go into a Peacock. They'll trigger Peacock's effect, shuffle back that Ignis, and then battle for 3k. Unfortunately, they don't have, it appears, the Yada in their grip, so they're going to have to be satisfied with two tokens and a pass. All right, we're going to go for the Disciples here, and uh, we do have a Tribute Summon available. We'll go for Heritage. That's one. The Ignis is going to have to kind of win the game on its own here. We'll Tribute Summon again for a Majesty Maiden. I mean, this is two very powerful monsters, but still a pretty long road to hoe for the true Draco player. Uh, we'll <laughs> it interrupted Kaiju Slumber, I suppose. A Disciples of the true Draco Phoenix to the hand. That is going to be killer against the... Uh, the Masterpiece deck. And we're going for Shinobar and Peacock again, giving back that Kaiju just in case they intend to Masterpiece next turn, and proceed to the end phase getting two tokens. It's just one card in hand, folks. Alright, they're gonna go for a Pot of Desires. That's a pretty good one to draw off the top. Followed by a Disciples. They're gonna activate the effect of Disciples to shuffle and draw. Three of those go back into the deck, and then we will fire the effect to Tribute Summon into a Dynamite Knight. They get over one of the tokens, and then pass their turn. Back to Rebecca. She's gonna draw. Activate Interrupted Kaiju Slumber. That's going to get the Dynamite Knight. Allow them to activate the True King's Return. That's going to be a little hard to get over. They'll proceed to the battle phase and walk into... Oh! Well, it do be that way. Yeah, it, uh, it do be that way. Wow. It's really every single Go Second Sweeper. Well, we still have to find a way to do the remaining uh, 3,500 points of damage. We're going to activate Into the Void here. And then pass turn, milling the entire hand. Nice masterpiece, by the way. Great masterpiece. And Maverick will surrender game one. How could this have happened? How on earth could this have happened? A deck as consistent and powerful as true Draco. Just reduced to nothing. I just, I can't imagine it. Time for game two. 
All right, we're going for the terraforming. We found Vine Wind of Mist Valley, and it looks like uh, Maverick has caught on and is making this deck go first. Yadagrasu, the normal summon that'll trigger Divine Wind of Mist Valley to end step and go to a barrier statue of the Stormwinds. Really good against anything but this exactly. Dragonic Diagram, let's come down. Activate Monarch Stormforth. Oh no, tributed for a Dragonic Knight. They'll uh, sack a copy of Into the Void, set one card, proceed to the battle phase, and do 2,800 points of damage. We just gotta out that and we can Yada Lock our opponent. We're gonna set one card and pass. Oh no, did Rebecca brick? Oh no. Oh, God, and here he comes. Disciples pop the last remaining card. Heritage effect. We'll draw a card here. We'll tribute summon. Oh, that's a big one. Okay, so there's Masterpiece. It is on Spell Monster. Good luck. That's pretty good. Uh, Destroy All Spell Traps is very powerful. Going for the Dynamite Knight here, and Rebecca is going to surrender. Wow, a very quick game, too, but doesn't really have a good out to Masterpiece in this matchup outside of Kaijus, and clearly didn't have one. All right, let's go to that all-important game three, and Rebecca is making... Making the true Draco player start. Very funny. They're going to lead with a Disciples. Uh, they're going to activate Disciples as effect. And then normal summon a uh, Dynamite Knight. Activating card of Demise. Terraforming comes afterwards into a Dragonic Diagram. They always seem to have it. Dragonic Diagram here pop popping a set card in order to get a copy of Heritage. Heritage effect. I believe we draw one here. We'll go ahead and oh take two. Set two. Pass on a Pot of Desires. Jesus Christ. All right. We'll lead with a copy of Talismandra and that procs Dynamite Knight. And the Monarchs erupt. Holy shit. The AoE skill drain. Oh, this might be it. Okay, we'll go for Pot of Disparity in games two and three. This card is crazy. Lightning Storm seems very good, but not when you already have monsters on your side of the field. Uh-oh. We're going to take an Interrupted Kaiju Slumber instead. Fire that bad boy off. Down comes Godarlo. We're going to set one card and proceed to the battle phase, walking over the Kaiju, and then pass turn. At end of Maverick's turn, if they don't control a Tribute Summon monster, this Monarch's Erupt will be going to the graveyard. They're going to pop a Teak Boo for a Masterpiece, activate Stormforth, and oh, shit. Oh, God. Okay, uh, there is the biggest masterpiece I've ever seen. But Dragma Punishment coming down and Solemn Judgment, the response! Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay, Kaiju Slumber is pretty good. So we can get a copy of Gamsail. We can tribute over the masterpiece. That's something. Shinobird calling. Okay, Shinobear and Peacock, go to the battle phase. We, again, if we could just, if we could just get rid of that fucking Monarchs Erupt, it'd be fine. Masterpiece gets to come back, but a Masterpiece that's come back under True King's Return really sucks ass. They're going to switch it to attack position, I'd imagine? No, they're going to pop it for this uh, Dragonic Diagram and then proc it. Oh, we're just going to attack. Wow, okay, uh, Heritage Effect, draw a card, I guess we'll Tribute Summon and proceed to the battle phase. And that, and that's just it. Wow, and, uh, unfortunately, it would appear that True Draco has advanced. Well, folks, it is time for round two, and eight decks remain. Gem Knight, Virtual World, Dinosaur, Bird Up, Dark Warrior, Pendulum, Magical Explosion, and True Draco. So, who's winning this next one? Gem Knight or Virtual World? Chat seems to think that it's going to be Virtual World. I, I agree, but, you know, let's find out. All right, so a lot depends on the die roll, and Virtual World won the die roll. Okay, so we're going to lead with a copy of Nyan Yan, sending the new trap to the graveyard. We're going to follow it up with a Kaloon. Activate Kaloon for a Chuche and go into a Stardust Charge Warrior to draw a card. We'll draw a card off the top of the deck, then fire off the Lalao, targeting the Chuche and summoning back a Lulu. We'll activate Nyan Yan's effect in Graveyard, and we'll make a copy of Shen Shen. We'll trigger the effect of Qinglong, draw a card, pitch a card, and activate ZC's effect as well. We're going to, I suppose, go into a Gossip Shadow. Lin Lin as well is going to trigger here. I guess we can make Tolmy. That's happened a couple of times. Yeah, Tolmy time. We're going to Tolmy to get back the Lao Lao for next turn and pass turn. This is a pretty good setup. One Negate, a Macro, and a Tolmy. All right, Unexpected Die coming out first and foremost for a Tourmaline. Next, we'll Normal Summon a copy of Crystal Rose and activate the effect, sending a copy of Lasley to go into Phantom Quartz. This is what you negate. They'll go for the Chuche here, popping the Phantom Quartz, sending two cards back in order to get it off the field. Obsidian goes to the hand, and Unexpected Die comes out again for another Tourmaline. Next, we're going to activate Gemini Fusion. Had it in the hand all along for a Zirconia. They'll go Obsidian, bringing back this copy of Lapis, but any monster they don't get on the field is bad news. They'll go to the Battle Phase, so they no longer have to deal with Gossip Shadow, then fire off this Phantom Quartz in Main Phase 2 to get a Brilliant Diamond. They'll proceed to the End Phase, and... You know, that's... <clears throat> that's it. All right, Lulu time. Uh, from here, we can send a copy of Qinglong to the graveyard. We can activate the effect of Lilian uh, hand as well. And then afterwards, we can synchro summon a copy of Vermilion Dragon Mech, uh, use the effect of ZC, and use the effect of Jean Wu in order to bring back Lulu. We'll overlay for a Fortune Tune, activate the effect of Mech to destroy the Zirconia, and proceed to battle phase. And if this isn't lethal, it is. I mean, it might as well be. Thankfully, it is. All right, time for game two. 
Not a, not a, not a, not a long one. Not a long one. Okay. So it's time for game two and rescue rabbit's good. Ash Blossom is better. Ash Blossom is better. Um, uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> you know, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, well, they tried their best and that's what counts. They're going to activate the effect of Nyan Nyan in Graveyard and we're going to make a Shen Shen. Down comes Vermilion Dragon Mech. I don't, why, what do you even go into here? Can you make lethal? I, I assuredly you can. Pitching a Nibiru, they were really prepared. Down comes the Lao Lao, out comes the ZC. We can activate the Jean Wound Graveyard to bring back 2 2, and then we can go into a Tolmi. We will pitch this Chinglong and then add back to hand a Lulu, getting in for, I, I imagine this is lethal. 28, 27, 27. And down goes Rykape's attempts to prove that FTK is broken. It is time for our second match of the top eight Bird Up versus Dinosaur, a match that. Uh, this could literally just be an actual match. This has nothing to do with the tournament, nothing to do with the ban list. Neither of these decks got anything particularly interesting. Wow. And already off to the races. Fossil Dig, Ash, Gamma. Well, you know, it is what it is. And uh, down comes an Omega as well. Three cards in hand, you idiot. Next up is Over After. Over After is going to send a copy of Giant Rex to the graveyard. And DD Crow is going to hit Miscellaneous Horse. Okay, that's pretty good, but two cards in hand. That's not very good. All right, we're going to leave with a copy of Fractar. That's as good as it gets. Oh my god, it's Fractar Kinkabio. Whoa, that's crazy. Okay, Cobalt Sparrow comes down. We're going to add a copy of Nerval. Droll and Lockbird. Bad. Down comes Flagette. We can use Flagette to summon the Nerval, and then Nerval for four to go into a copy of Shrike. We'll trigger the effect of Shrike in order to banish that, and then get in for 55, uh, ending on a Barrier Statue of the Stormwinds. I don't know, probably the Big Bird. Yeah, Apex Avian coming down. Wow. Uh, huh. That looked a lot better than I thought it would. I, I saw the two cards in hand and got a little excited, but in fact, uh, this is the end of the game. They're going to Forbidden Droplet, and that's met by Called by the Grave, but not good enough. Uh, going to the battle phase and walking over Omega is probably enough for lethal. Wow, setting the Baby Sarasaurus even. who Monka S, and Crazy Wizza will surrender. That was a... That was a quick game one. I don't know, if you'd asked me who would have won that after the end of turn one, I would have had the wrong answer. Okay, uh, time for game two. Fire formation tanky. Ah, Dino's making them go first. Clever. Okay, so they're going to send a copy of uh, Cobalt uh, Sparrow to the graveyard, then Reborn it, triggering Cobalt Sparrow for a Nerval. From here, they can activate the effect of Nerval uh, or Overlay for Recital Starling, activating Recital Starling's effect to increase attack, then second effect in order to add to hand a copy of DD Crow. They'll activate Nerval's effect in order to get a kit to hand. From here, we can activate Seros Pitching Kit, and then activate Kit's effect in order to send to the graveyard another Fractar. We'll activate Seros for two in order to summon a copy of Flagette, then we'll activate Flagette for a DD Crow. We'll go into Simorg and then activate Flagette's effect, going into a Link Haribo and proceeding to end phase, ending on a Barrier Statue of the Stormwinds and a Link Haribo. This is probably good enough. Pot of Extravagance coming down first, and uh, that's strong. Lost World coming down second, normal summoning a Soul Eating Overraptor here. Now, unfortunately, adding Miscellaneous Source to hand is good, but won't do anything in the battle phase. Link Haribo uh, negating that attack. They're going to set one and pass at end step. Out comes the big bird, and holy guacamole, that's miserable. Saros for three here. We can get Rugal if we want. Going for Ray. Oh, we just have the OTK. 25, 22, 19. Uh, we're, we're just a little off. We're 200 off. Uh, we'll activate Ray's effect to shuffle back this copy of uh, Soul Eating Overraptor, and Simorg will trigger at end step for a Cobalt Sparrow. They're going to go for Cobalt Sparrow's effect for a DD Crow at end phase and pass it back to their opponent, who for turn will start with a copy of Soul Eating Overraptor. That's going to get Apex Avian, that's going to be met with a Miscellaneous Source, and that's going to be met with a Called by the Grave, and that's going to be met with a Bell, and that's going to be met with a Ray six deep on this chain. Oh my god. Tell me that isn't hype. Tell me that isn't something that you uniquely get by including more Called by the Graves in the format. They're going to attack over the Barrier Statue, and finally they can play the game. They'll activate Miscellaneous Source, but the DD Crow we know is in there. And third Miscellaneous Source in the hand will go for Miscellaneous Source's effect for one, getting an Animadorned Archer sword triggering its effect and the effect of lost world as well they're going to summon a token to their side of the field popping a baby sarasaurus and triggering baby sarasaurus's effect for a baby sarasaurus they'll activate over after his effect targeting a baby sarasaurus for a baby sarasaurus triggering the effect of the baby sarasaurus for a miscellaneous source from here they can go into a dolka and a link Haribo. I, they're just dead here right double levo pill finally uh for an ultimate conductor tyranno and pass turn sovereignty at end step gets met with a dolka sending the sovereignty to the graveyard but i think they just have enough attackers yeah, we can use Fractar's effect here in order to send Nerval, and Nerval's effect in order to get a copy of Kit. Uh, we'll go for Forbidden Droplet. Wow, sending the... Wow, sending the spells to go into a Shrike. We'll trigger Shrike's effect, and then Normal Summon a Kinkabio to go into Assembled Nightingale. 
Whoa, that is so painful. All right, they're going to just fire off all their negated monster effects, I suppose, to BM. They'll go to the battle phase, triggering the effect of Link Haribo. It's negated, so they'll walk into everything, and then they'll go into a Downard and a Zeus. They'll go into a Flagette and trigger the effect of Flagette for a kit before going into a Rugal, so they have this Shrike online as well. Their opponent draws for turn, they're going to go for a Miscellaneous Horus for two, that prompts the Rugal, that pops the ultimate Conductor Tyranno, which only outs the Zeus. They go for a Cobalt Sparrow, and then on a new chain we can trigger the effect of Shrike, which will activate on a further chain than the Lost World, so you can banish the Lost World. New Lost World, but going to be tough, walking into the Link Haribo and, you know, using the Link Haribo's effect in Graveyard to send that Cobalt Sparrow, then passing turn. Petit Tyranodon does destroy itself at end step for a Pancratops, and that does trigger Lost World, but that's probably all she wrote. Uh, draw for turn, Zeus flipped up, Appaloosa for two that's enough battle phase attack into the pancratops pancratops effect appaloosa effect and we have got there ladies and gentlemen wow that was poggers so it is time for the match of the century sir eminon on dark warrior versus nerd factor on pendulum i won't leave you in suspense for any longer we've got two titans here and uh, uh, Sir Eminon won the die roll. So Hero Lives comes down, followed by the Stratos. We'll trigger the effect of the Stratos. That's going to add from deck to hand a copy of Malicious. What the fuck? They're going to normal summon a copy of Aqua Dolphin. Oh, that's why. Okay, we can send that copy of Harmonizing to the graveyard, then activate Malicious as effect in graveyard for a Malicious before going into an Ice Hold. They'll go for an Ice Hold effect in order to get a copy of Giant Gearfried, and then they'll activate Ice Hold's effect for four in order to summon from deck a copy of Armageddon Knight. We'll trigger the effect of Armageddon Knight here to send a copy of Plague Spreader Zombie to go into an Appaloosa, and now that we're protected, we'll go for another Malicious. Afterwards, we're going to go for a Plague Spreader Zombie, get it to our side of the before making a Halka Fibrax and activating Halka Fibrax's effect for a 001. You've seen this combo before. Down comes Aurorodon. We'll summon three tokens and the 001 from the graveyard. And afterwards, we're going to go for a Power Tool Dragon. We'll trigger the effect of the Power Tool Dragon, and we will add a Equip Spell from deck to hand. Next, we'll activate the effect of the Aurorodon to get a Colt Wing from deck. That'll trigger and get two tokens source out of the field, summoning back the 001 from the graveyard. From here, we are going to go into a Herald of the Arclight, a Phoenix Blade activation, and a DDR. That's going to bring back the Plague Spreader Zombie and enable a Roland. Roland's effect will trigger. Plague Spreader Zombie will trigger. We'll go ahead and go into a Charles and end on a Borlode Savage Dragon with three mats. This is good. This is good. <clears throat> oh no, no, they're still going. Holy shit, they're still going. Nope, it's not over yet. We can make double Herald. Oh, we can rip two cards. Rip two cards? Yeah, fine. Who cares? Doesn't mean, doesn't mean, does, uh, do, nothing, nothing. Yep, all good. Uh, okay. Stargazer Magician and Wisdom Eye. They're going to negate the Wisdom Eye activation. Seems correct. Normal summon tuning, tuning effect, <laughs> tank 400. Go to the battle phase, walk in, and Nerd Factor surrenders. Okay, so that, that was game one. Time for game two. All right, we're going to lead with a copy of Pot of Desires out of Nerd Factor. I imagine we'll activate Instant Fusion in order to summon a Millennialize Restrict. We are now immune to most hand traps. White Wing into Halka Fibrax. Star Pendulum Graph will trigger here in order to summon a copy of Tuning Magician. And afterwards, we'll get a copy of Wisdom Eye Magician to hand. We'll go Wisdom Eye and Wisdom Eye. We'll trigger the effect of the Wisdom Eye eventually after going for Selene first. Now that we have five spell counters at our disposal, we'll bring back this copy of Millennialize Restrict. And down comes Nibiru. Millenniumize Restrict! Really good card. Very good. It just protects against every hand trap. We're gonna go for two Wisdom Eyes, then Oaf Dragon, one of those suckers back. We're setting a Harmonizing, then Pendulum Summoning. One, two, three, four! No, just, just, just two. We'll go for a Savage Dragon, then Tuning Magician's Effect, and from here we can make our opponent take, uh, 400 points of life, I guess? Oh, Ding Dong! Oh, you wouldn't make Ding Dong unless you drew it. Yep. Torn Scale is going to be met with the Nine Pillars of the Yang Zing and ugh, the Garnet coming in clutch. They'll go to the battle phase, walk over the token, but uh, Sir Eminon doesn't have a clean out to the Borload Savage. Instant Fusion being met with said Borload Savage. That's going to be a turn pass. Nerd Factor might just do it. All right, going to add the... Uh... Wow, that's everything. Yeah, Selene again. Uh, we're going to trigger the effect of Star Pendulum Graph. Just a crazy card. Uh, I forget formats where it's bad that this card is actually just insane. We'll summon the Millennium Eyes Restrict back and go into Access Code Talker. Access Code Talker plus uh, Borload should probably be the end of this. We will go and uh, attack, and uh, and that's it. That's it. That's it. Okay. I'll say it. Time for that all-important game three. Uh, here we go, baby. Ooh, what the hell? And Sir Eminon is making Nerd Factor go first. What the fuck? Oh my god, Gamma comes down on the Halka Fibrax. 
Pankratops comes out, and that's it. Wait, that's the entire turn. Oh, bet. Durandal uh, triggering off of the uh, Pankratops, summoning the red layer, normal summoning the tier scale. That's going to be met with the Pankratops, but one extender does it, and Raynaud is one such extender. Wow, Eminon does not take any shit. Says, I'm boarding into 16 going second tools. Go to hell. We're firing off this ice hold. We're going to summon a copy of Armageddon Knight from our deck. We're going to fire off the Armageddon Knight. We'll go for a Plague Spreader Zombie, and now we can do the full combo. And don't worry, friends, this full combo is well over nine. 9,000 points of damage. They're going to go for an Auroradon. Going to get three tokens to their side of the field and the 001 back from their graveyard. A little different this time around. From here, we can go into a Power Tool Dragon. We'll get the DDR, I'd imagine, uh, provided they're playing three copies. And then Phoenix Blade as well. It's got to be Nibiru or Bust Buddy. And even then, you've only got one card in hand in your Pendulum deck. Colt Wing Effect, we're going to get two tokens and the 001 from Graveyard. That's going to enable some pretty interesting synchros. I don't think we've seen this setup yet. DDR bringing back this copy of Plague Spreader Zombie. No, it's the same. We're going for Roland, and then afterwards we can activate Phoenix Blade, activate one of these bad boy Plague Spreaders, and go into a Charles. At end of this, we'll make a Savage, as always, and now that we have Negation, we have nothing to fear. 621, 3000, and Nerd Factor dashed against the rocks and out of the tournament. All right, it is time for the last game of round two. This will determine our top four decks. It is True Draco versus Magical Explosion. Now, I tried to get a competent deck and an incompetent deck in every match, but I kind of ran out. So the bottom half of this bracket, you may have noticed, is a little jank. Uh, this is, this is going to be a weird one. Uh, but we will go to it regardless and treat it with all of the sincerity that it deserves. Into the Void firing off, and it looks like the true draco player is going first i had to think for a second i can only tell because of the uh lack of a side deck or extra deck rather heritage time i think we draw two off this one nope just one well then tribute summon a copy of dynamite knight okay uh dynamite knight pass is not that big of a deal at end step we will go for wall wall is going to set a copy of numeron network can we do the ftk okay first up is numeron calling do we just otk here hold up is this just an otk <clears> hmm. <throat> okay. Um. Well, we're getting there. Into the void, firing off broken bamboo sword. True Draco Apocalypse coming out. Yeah, for Masterpiece. That's pretty good. Draco Apocalypse popping the wrong one. Oh, but Masterpiece can still pop the sword. Going for another Numeron Network and an Allure of Darkness. It's no. It's not enough. Bad one, buddy. No. Oh, God. Oh, an explosion for 34. Not enough. Oh, Christ. <clears throat> I think I maybe would have gone for it. Okay, they're going to go for the um, Disciples into the Pot of Duality. And this is, I mean, this is it. It doesn't matter what the true Draco player does from this position. I have zero cards in hand. I don't think the uh, FTK player is getting back in it. Hilariously, they still have a turn to their name. Let's find it. Cool. All right. Uh, not a surprise in game one, but uh, we'll, we'll see how game two pans out. Explosion will have to win a game on the draw, which seems impossible. Toon table contents into toon table contents into toon table contents is a good start. TTC into TTC into TTC into the big gunner toon barrel dragon. Fire off an allure and this time it has no chance of banishing the entire hand. We'll fire off a spellbook of knowledge and an into the void. Next we're going to go for a Numeron network. We are getting there. We might make S0. Can they beat S0? Alright, hand destruction time. Foolish burial goods. Sending cursed bamboo sword. We're going to get a golden bamboo sword to hand. We'll activate Curse Bamboo Sword. Oh my god, we might have it. Shit. All right, we'll fire off Memories of Hope. That's four. Into the Void. Into the Void. Terraforming. There's another Numeron Network. Numeron Network time. Numeron Network time. Set one. Utopic Sexel. Curse Bamboo Sword. Get it broken. What the fuck? Oh my god, it was all the once per turns. Oh no. Okay, well, they get in for 2,000. Uh, never mind. They get in for zero. <laughs> they can make Zeus. And that's very funny. Okay, terraforming effect. Uh, Diagram Stormforth. Card of Demise. And uh, Diagram's gonna pop one of those set cards for Masterpiece. I'll activate True Draco Heritage and Magical Explosion time for 46. Not enough. Heritage to tribute summon the opponent's monster for a Masterpiece. And oh my god, this is it. No, this is actually it. 
Oh, Pot of Duality revealing the second masterpiece. Oh my god, 11 cards in deck and two of them are Magical Explosion that win the game on the spot. No! All right, let's see. You got to draw exactly Explosion. Allure! No, wasn't enough. Eight cards to Explosion. Oh, how painful. Ugh. Well, sorry, Space Dandy. Wait, do we still have a turn? We don't. Looks like Magical Explosion has exploded its last Magician, and True Draco will be moving to the top four. So it is time for the top four. We've got four decks still in, and my tournament where I aim to show everyone that my changes won't absolutely ruin Yu-Gi-Oh! We've got Virtual World, Bird Up, two decks that you all know and love, two current meta decks, clearly the meta is fine. And then we've got Dark Warrior and True Draco. Hmm. It is possible that Malicious and Masterpiece were a mistake. But for what it's worth, this is the evil side of the bracket. The bracket that has very few competent decks. Like, I don't seriously think either of these decks are going to be able to beat anything that knows what it's doing. And speaking of decks that know what they're doing, we're going to start with the Bird Up versus VW match. This is Rin PG333 versus Gaia76. Chat seems to t think that Bird Up is going to make this happen. I don't know upon what. So let's head over to the dueling screen and see if they are right. <clears throat> All right, we're going to begin with a copy of Pot of Disparity, finding off the top. Okay, all right. An emergency teleport. Looks like the Virtual World player has won the die roll. They're going to begin with a copy of Chuche, and then activate Lulu, targeting Chuche, sending the Reborn to the graveyard, and activate ZC's targeting the Lulu. They're going to go for a Juju, and then activate Lao Lao's effect, sending Chuche. They'll then go into a Shen Shen, activate e Telly, summon a copy of Nian Yan, and activate Chu Che to put that sucker to three. That way they end on Gossip Shadow, plus Shen Shen, plus Lulu for next turn. Pretty respectable start. Next, we've got Forbidden Droplet. <clears throat> so, you know. Have fun with that. Ooh, and a Cold Buy for the Ash, too. Gets better. All right, can Rin establish a winning board state right here? That's basically what they've got to do to win from here. Uh, Nerval effect. They're going to get a copy of Saros to hand. They're going to normal summon the Saros. Does not happen often, but every time it does, it's a hoot. They're going to go for Rugal and Shrike. They'll trigger the effect of Shrike and the effect of Rugal to decrease the effect, or the attack of everything, and basically just pass on Shrike. Okay, that's not actually a winning board state. They might be able to lose this. They'll activate Chuche to begin with to get a copy of Lao Lao to hand, sending the Reborn. They'll activate Lao Lao, targeting the Chuche, and sending a Nian Yan so they can get a ZC from Graveyard. This triggers a Nian Yan after the ZC is reborn, and they'll make a Stardust Charge. Warrior. From here, they can draw a card, and we'll go ahead and put one of those uh, face-down cards back in. We'll go for a copy of Lulu, and then get a copy of Chuche to hand before making Vermilion Dragon Mech, and using Vermilion Dragon Mech to pop the Shrike. Upon activation of the Shrike, oh no, we'll activate Ash and forget that called by the grave is on. Oh, fool. All right, pass back to Rin, and they've actually got a pretty big open here. Foolish Burial sending a copy of Cobalt to the graveyard means the Turquoise Warbler will be able to summon it back and trigger the effect of the Cobalt Sparrow, getting a copy of Nerval to hand. From here, we'll overlay for a copy of the Assembled Nightingale and proceed to the battle phase, walking in for 400 twice. And then in main phase two, of course, we can make Downard and Zeus, or just Zeus if you prefer. We'll go for the Zeus because we know the set card is Chuche, and they will chain... They'll chain... Whoa, they'll chain Chuche targeting their own card! When Vermilion Dragon Mech is sent to the graveyard by a card effect, you get to add a card from your banished back, and they get the Lao Lao. That's so crazy! Alright, well, they do get to end on Simorg into Miss Valley Apex Avian, so this is still a pretty big setup. Alright, Chinglong effect, we're going to get a Lulu and send a copy of Lao Lao to the graveyard, going for the Reborn, and down comes the bird, and down comes the Gamma, and down comes the Ash Blossom! Oh my god, and... There goes the game. Wow. Um, Simorg to the graveyard, but anything will end this. We even get to get the Zeus again. Drawing for turn and a normal summon does it. Saros is good enough and Gia will surrender. That was... Whoa, that was so good. Oh, that was so good. All right, on to game two. Okay, so for game two, I imagine the Virtual World player is going first again. And yup, here's the Pot of Disparity. We'll go for the Pot of Disparity and find off the top. God, the Kaloon. Oh, getting a Lao Lao instead. I guess we already opened the Kaloon. Kaloon for a Chuche and then Lulu targeting the Chuche. This is as good as it gets. We'll go ahead for a copy of ZC and then we'll activate ZC's effect. And then we'll activate the effect of the Nian Nian in Graveyard later in the turn after we Lao Lao targeting our Juju. We're going to send a Chuche to the Graveyard and then trigger the effect of Nian Nian. We're going to go into a Shen Shen, activate the effect of Nian Yan, putting one of these banished uh, Eevee monsters back. Chuche effect sending a Kaloon. Lili effect sending a Chuche. 
and a 2-2, and ending on Beatrice, in fact, uh, using Beatrice's effect and walking into an infinite impermanence. That's odd. Why would you infip Beatrice now? Seems like you would do it on your turn. Ah, I see. Okay, you drew two infip. All right. We'll go for Pancratops, activate Pancratops, targeting the Chuche. Uh, we'll activate Fractar's effect. Oh, and a huge misfire. Didn't expect the nail shit all aerial, did ya? It's just as good as Lancia, banishing the entire graveyard here, and then Saras into Lancia as well. Holy shit, they had everything. Whoa, they had everything. Oh, that's crazy. Oh, oh Jesus. Alright, so it's time for that all-important Game 3. Will Rin be able to do it? They're on the play this time. Warbler into... Oh, no. Okay, gonna go for Resital Starling for Sapphire Swallow. We'll activate Sapphire Swallow. They have to have a Nerval or they're dead. Okay, Nerval's something. Let's go for Flaget. We'll trigger Flaget's effect to summon a DD Crow. Nerval's effect for two in order to get another Flaget. No, a Conductor. So we can make an Appaloosa and trigger the effect of both Flaget and Nerval. We'll go ahead and get a Saros to hand. We've got to have another one. Kit is fine. We'll activate Kit's effect for three. We're going to summon a Simorg and go into a Linkaribo. Go into an Almirage Kit effect in order to send a Fractar and End Phase. Trigger the effect of Simorg. And it gets Ashed only to eat an Appaloosa. This is pretty good. Okay, can VW out this? They'll begin with the Pancratops. Oh my god, Pancratops outs the whole board. Okay, we're going to Link Karibo the ZC. Pancratops outs the Appaloosa. They'll target the... Oh my god, they'll activate the Dow Mirage! Targeting the Miss Valley Apex Avian so it lives! They're going to go for the Lalo. Miss Valley Apex Avian negates. It's got to be one additional name in hand. And they don't have it! Bird up. Bird up. Bird up. Holy shit. Bird up in finals, baby. You're watching Bird up. The worst deck in finals. All right, time for our other best of three match. True Draco versus Dark Warrior. Sir Eminon versus Maverick CXX. Let's see how it's going to go, baby. All right, we're going to begin with a copy of Pot of Desires. Looks like True Draco has won the die roll. We're going to go for a terraforming. That's going to add a... Dragonic Diagram to hand. We'll fire off the Dragonic Diagram, setting a copy of True Draco Apocalypse to Graveyard. Set two and pass. That's the True Draco I know. We'll go for a Hero Lives here. We're going to activate a Hero Lives to get a copy of Stratos. We'll trigger the effect of Stratos. Stratos is going to add from deck to hand a copy of Vion. Afterwards, you can normal summon the copy of Vion to send a copy of Malicious to the Graveyard. Next, we'll trigger the effect of Malicious, summoning it from deck, and then summoning a copy of Isold as well. True Draco Apocalypse coming out. Tribute summoning and Stormforth. Even worse, that means we'll be able to go into a Masterpiece with our opponent's monster and won't be able to trigger the effect of the Isold. We'll be able to pop the Vion as well. We can go for the Malicious. We need one more extender, and Instant Fusion is a good one. Erupt! Erupt is the set card. Okay, well, Olivier is good enough. We'll go into Charles, and Charles is a big boy. Uh, unfortunately, he does get popped by Masterpiece. We'll set one card and pass turn. Okay. Sebto, thank you for the host. Drake Phoenix fires. We're going to tribute summon one. Dynamite Knight fires. We're going to target that set card, and we'll proceed to the battle phase. Yeah, this is, uh, that's it for Ceremonon. I may have made an egregious error here. Time for game two! Well, this time, Sir Eminon gets to start. Maybe we're going to start with, uh, the Rota for Noble Knights, followed up with Torn Scale, and followed up with Ancient Cloak. That's going to add a Silent Boots to hand. We'll summon the Silent Boots and make an Isold. We'll go for Isold's effect. Isold is going to add a Gear Freed. Afterwards, we're going to fire off Isold for four. That's going to summon from deck a copy of Armageddon Knight. Armageddon Knight will proc in order to send a Plague Spreader Zombie, and so will the Silent Boots to get a copy of Shade Brigandine. We'll Tear Scale here because a monster was banished, so we can go to Appaloosa, and now that we're protected, we'll go for Shade Brigandine and activate Plague Spreader Zombie's effect as well. We'll make a Halka Fibrax and then activate Halka Fibrax's effect for a 001, and from here we can go into an Aurorodon, activate Aurorodon's effect for three, and summon the 001 from the graveyard. After that, we can Synchro Summon, I imagine, a copy of Herald. I don't really know what the play is right here. No, just make a Power Tool once again. I At some point, I'll actually figure it out. We'll activate the effect of Aurorodon, sending both the Power Tool and itself to the graveyard for Coltwing, and then triggering Coltwing's effect for two tokens, which will trigger the 001 in the graveyard once again. From here, we can use the token and the 001 to make a Herald, and get that copy of Phoenix Blade back to hand before DDRing the Phoenix Blade to the graveyard in order to get a Plague Spreader Zombie and make a Roland. Afterwards, we'll activate Roland's effect and activate Plague Spreader's effect, summoning it from the graveyard to make a Charles. Finally, we're going to make a Borlode Savage in defense position, playing around as best we can some really powerful uh, equalizers. We'll go for Charles' effect at end step and equip two cards before passing back to our opponent. Let's see what they got!
You gotta be fucking kidding me. Oh my god, you gotta be fucking kidding me! Oh... This isn't even anything I did! You can play this in normal Yu-Gi-Oh! Oh, Jesus. Alright. Double into the void card of demise. This must be nice. Pot of duality afterwards. We're gonna get, uh, desires. We'll fire off the desires. Just just draw the whole fucking deck. Who cares? Go to the battle phase. Walk over the herald. Main phase 2. Set 2. Go to end phase. Oh, Pop Lord. 2. Amano Am Am back to hand. And here we go. Oh! Never mind! Never mind, buddy! Never mind! Uh, Ceremonon is the greatest player who ever lived. Uh, Ceremonon is simply, it's simply, uh, just draw Harpy's Feather Duster. Just draw Harpy's Feather Duster. Come on, chat. <laughs> what are you, stupid? Oh my god, so we get to negate one of these with Savage Dragon, which is nice, but uh, realistically, this is the end of the game. We'll activate the effect of Durandal, we'll get a copy of Raynaud to hand. Afterwards, we'll go into a Roland, we'll equip the Roland to the Charles, which will allow us to pop the Masterpiece, bad card, and we'll make a Gear Freed. And that is the end of game two! He did it! He did it! <laughs> Alright, game three. <clears throat> okay, so True Draker goes first. Gonna go for a Ignis Heat Pass. We've got to be able to beat this. Durandal effect. Red layer. Go for red layer. Normal Armageddon Knight. Trigger. Ignis Heat. Trigger. The Monarchs erupt. Forbidden Droplet. Let's go. Okay. We do get to walk over the Ignis too. But that's it. Oh. Uh, oh! We just needed one turn to get the Monarchs erupt off the field. Masterpiece Monarchs erupt cannot possibly be enough to win here. Masterpiece Monarchs Rope cannot possibly be enough to win here. Duality off the top! Holy shit a moly! Oh my god, you've gotta be fucking with me. Oh no. Instant Fusion. Theseus. Connector. Charles. Battle Phase. Draco Slaying King. Zombie to block. And desires. Why wouldn't it be desires? Completely unnecessary, but why wouldn't it be desires? I may have fucked this one up. So, Chad, it's time for the finals, and, um... How am I gonna spin this? Uh, it wasn't actually Masterpiece, it was, uh, uh, it was, uh, the Monarchs Erupt. It was Mystic Mine, it was a Mono Awada. We have to ban those cards. It, it doesn't matter that the deck has three Masterpiece. They're not even playing three, they're playing two. It's not, it's not that good, come on! Uh, our finals, unfortunately, are... Rin PG333 on Bird Up. And... Maverick CXX on True Draco. Um... Yeah, uh, you know, I, uh, I, I, uh, I wish best of luck to both the competitors. True Draco has won the die roll. They're gonna begin with Pot of Desires, and holy shit, set four, that's an FTK. Alright, Fire Formation Tanky coming down first for a Fractar. They're gonna activate the Fractar effect, sending the Fractar to the graveyard, followed by the Nerval. They'll trigger the affected Nerval for a kit. Next, they're going to normal summon the kit, one of those hands, A, and then go Apocalypse into Stormforth. Jesus Christ. We'll tribute summon a copy of Ignis Heat and activate the effect of kit. We'll trigger the effect of Seros to summon itself, then activate Seros' effect. Why are they not Ignising? They're gonna Ignis now, and Eat the Forbidden Droplet, and eat the Monarchs fucking erupt. Oh my god. Alright, we'll pass turn. We just need one turn. One turn without a Tribute Summon to Monster. Yeah, why not? Yeah, why not? Why not? Why not? Hey, I. why not? Why not? I. Why not? I, uh, why not? You know? You know? Why not? Why not? Let's go to game two. Oh, and Rin is making the true Draco player go first. And Droll and Lockbird! Just draw a Droll! Just draw a Droll, chat! It's easy as that! Easy as that! Just draw a Droll, you idiots! Alright, we'll we'll find six off the top. Alright, there goes Fractar. 
Uh, next, we're going to activate the effect of Foolish Burial. That's going to send to Graveyard a... Whoa! A Cobalt Sparrow! I suppose we have Cobalt Sparrow plus Warbler. A. We'll get a copy of uh, Nerve Alt to hand, and then we'll activate Recital Starling using its effect to get a DD Crow. We'll activate the effect of the Sapphire Swallow in hand to summon the Nerve All and itself. Then we will Link Summon a Flagette, triggering... Nerval to go into a Shrike super early to banish that set card. We'll activate the Flagette's effect for a DD Crow and make a Simorg. Then activate Nerval's effect for a Kit. We'll normal summon the Kit. We hadn't normaled? And then go three for a Havarsreg. That is the end of game two. Shit. No, it's not. I forgot about how Pot of uh, Dual or uh, Pot of the new Pot works. Okay, well, end step, we're going to go Saros for three. That's going to get a Lugal. We'll go into Appaloosa for two, and at end step, trigger Simorg to get a copy of Apex Avian. All right. Down comes Ignis Heat. We'll use Return to Pop the Avian. We'll trigger uh, Avian with the Return. Uh, we'll Appaloosa the Ignis activation so it doesn't get anything. That's pretty good. Uh, afterwards, we'll activate Rugal in order to bring back the Saros, then Shrike to banish the Ignis, the old Draconic Diagram afterwards, popping the Sept card. It is a Spell Trap. Afterwards, they'll activate Heritage. That's two draws, I believe. Okay, here's Pot of Duality, not liking where this is going. Skill Drain, sweet, and Masterpiece. They will take Masterpiece. Heritage Tribute Summon, down comes Masterpiece. True Draco Apocalypse, pop the Rugal, Rugal effect, and go to the battle phase to walk over the Opelousa. They will pop the Saros in main phase two and pass turn. Simorg triggers to bring out the Apex Avian once again, and I think actually they don't have it. They're going to normal summon the Kinkabayo. They'll trigger the Masterpiece, and the Monarchs Erupt, which fiends the... Wow, the Apex Avian, the absolute weight on that sucker. And thankfully, Rin has got it to game three. Rin's got it to game three. We just need to see one game without erupt. One game without erupt. Let's go. Last game. Please don't make me look like an idiot, Rin. Okay, so it looks like uh, Mav has forced Rin to go first. So we're going to get Cobalt Sparrow back. We're going to get Nerval to hand. We're going to go for Recital Starling. We'll trigger Recital in order to get a... Who got a Sapphire Swallow. This is full combo. From here, we can go into Flagette. We'll trigger Nerval's effect for four. Oh, smart. Going to Shrike, then Disparity, uh, recognizing that there's no reason to make the normal Appaloosa board because those cards suck in this matchup. Instead, we're going to get a Saros, and I imagine go for a Lugal Shrike end board with a kit in the graveyard. Okay, so if we banish here three, we get Lugal, we go to end phase, we go Simorg, we have a banish, we have a negate. It should be enough. Okay, Desires is a good start. Chicken game. Okay, we'll draw an extra card. We'll go for True Draco Phoenix. Trigger that. Rugal triggers. Stormforth triggers. Apex Avian triggers. Okay, so now that that's back, we can use the effect of Shrike to banish Dynamite Knight, but unfortunately Dynamite Knight will trigger. Oh, card of demise. Oh, heritage. Oh, no. Go to battle phase. Walk over that. Okay, wait, wait, wait. This is a very winnable position for Rin. A very winnable position. We're going to tribute summon the Apex Avian. Monarchs erupt. This is why we tribute summon to the Apex Avian. Okay. Erupt is down. We'll trigger the effect of Fractar. That triggers Dra uh, the Draco Fighter. No big deal. No big deal. We'll send a copy of Nerval. We'll activate Nerval's effect. Get a copy of Saros. We'll activate Saros' effect. Pitching King of Bio and triggering the effect of Shrike for another... How many? How many do you have? How many do you have? Chicken game effect. Terraforming. Draconic diagram. This can't be how it ends. Oh, 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 I can't have been this wrong. Oh, man. Oh, my God. And True Draco playing two copies of Masterpiece wins the whole thing. So of the cards we have here, I would say that I am not comfortable bringing this asshole back. The last thing that deck needs is a win con. 
Uh, I actually kind of liked Pankratops at three, but I could see why people wouldn't. Dynamite Knight. Maybe that was the problem card. No. Uh, we probably can't bring Malicious off. I don't think we really got to see a good show off of Sky Blaster, but I am willing to take that off for spec. Uh, Instant Fusion was pretty bad all tournament, I think. It was a nice extender. Yeah, we can take Instant Fusion off. One Day of Peace was way better than I expected. Into the Void was way better than I expected. I liked what Called by the Grave did for the format, but, you know, feel free to disagree. And I think everything else was mostly fine. We learned a lot here today, chat. But mostly we learned that I am fallible. Once every four years, I will permit myself exactly one bad take. And today, the bad take is that Masterpiece could come off. Thank you.